Hi, my name is Ralph Eggleston and I'm the production designer on Finding Nemo. My role was to work with a team of artists to provide a visual style for the film with the backgrounds and the characters. Hello, my name is Ricky Nierva and I'm the character art director for Finding Nemo. My job was to make the characters look fantastic. <laughs> Hi, my name is Robin Cooper and I was the shading art director on Finding Nemo and my job is to make Ricky's characters look even better by addressing the surface qualities of those wonderful characters <laughs> and also the surface qualities of all other items in the film. We're going to sit back and look at some artwork from the pre-production of Finding Nemo. What's really fun about it is everybody has a different take on the same subject and it's just great to kind of inspire people, especially the director, so that he can begin making decisions on what he really wants. What we're going to be looking at first is what we call the prologue, and it's the opening of the film, and it kind of sets up father's dilemma. He's there with mother, and they're looking at the eggs uh, right before a barracuda attacks. This is an image of the uh, barracuda, and if you look closely, you can see mother's tail hanging out of his mouth. And uh, Andrew Stanton, the director of Finding Nemo, wanted us to go more of a kind of a, like a bullet train design for him, just speed. This is a painting, actually, of trying to design sort of or define what kind of metallic highlight we'd have on the barracuda itself and what kind of like the shape of the scales and the shape of the chevrons and that sort of thing. This was a piece that just helped us define the kind of fanciful nature of the world of the reef. And the coral reef is so beautiful, but there's so much there. We had to find a way of organizing it and simplifying it and paring it down and, and choosing this was a piece that was done exploring the translucency or what we call transblurrency of the anemone tendrils. And just how translucent we'd want it to be. We wanted it to seem inviting and not like he's living in a, you know, a bunch of water balloons. This is a development piece of Father, Mother, and Nemo. And this is very, very, very early on, even before Nemo has his lucky fin. It's his father looking out on the world, something he doesn't really enjoy much of anymore because of what happened to him in the past. This is my, one of my favorite pre-production. The beauty of all these images is that the light is just so incredible. This is a great pastel of pearl. Flapjack octopus. Flapjack octopus. In her actual flapjack octopus color, which of course she didn't turn out to be. Oh, no, they have some pink ones. Pink. They have pink ones. No, they don't. Yes, they do. <laughs> no, they don't. Yes, they do. <laughs> Ours does. Here's a great picture of uh, early Dory um, capturing her nuttiness in this piece. Her wacky nature. Wacky wackiness. This one piece, Andrew knew that this was our character, Dory. One of the cool things about the, the character is the eyes. And I don't know if it's this drawing so much as it is about the eyes and the depth that I was able to get in the eyes that are really based on Ellen DeGeneres' face and her eyes. She's got such beautiful blue eyes and such deep shadows in her eyes. Bruce Chum and Anchor, the three sharks in our film. Yep. And uh, Andrew and Ralph really wanted to go for a scary, scary look. He just kept giving us the direction of just go for scary as possible. This scene was always in the movie, although they were playing volleyball with the mines originally. Um, this drawing kind of set the tone for this entire scene, the entire sequence in the film, in terms of the set. And this is a painting for what a mine might look like, and also for a suggestion of what the moss hanging from the mine might look like. Oh, which there's... Was yeah. So many details about this piece. It's incredible. You can even see the welding. This is a painting uh, exploring the wall of the uh, abyss wall, which is what the submarine is hanging out over. This is um, part of the anglerfish sequence, where anglerfish are these fish that have these little lures over their head that kind of lure fish to them. There's so many different types of anglerfishes out there, too. There's They run the gamut of having smaller eyes to larger eyes. and. Uh, the artists would do different iterations of that to try to find our character for the film. And also there's a lot of machinery on this thing, like, you know, the glowing light and the lure and the runway lights and pearlescent the teeth, eyes. Pearlescent eyes and the <laughs> teeth that have to be see-through and there's a lot going on on that character. Now we get into the tank. This is the first scene that was put into production in the tank and it was called Initiation. It's where there are other characters that have been in the tank already are kind of bringing Nemo in to their gang. The dramatic coloring, the orange color of the volcano really did kick back some of the colors on the characters. It works for this scene, but uh, we did have to keep reminding ourselves that you will see them in regular lighting. <laughs> you know, they're not always going to look like this. can't change them so that they look good just in that scene. <clears throat> this helped us uh, establish the, the Vegas style lighting that we wanted in the tank. In color. There's lots of color there. Lots of pretty images. That was one of the funny things is that we wanted the entire world of the dentist office to seem antiseptic and drab, except for the tank. You know, every, everyone remembers the toy chest after you get your examination from the dentist, and 
you know, we just try to get all those little details in there. If you look closely in the movie, you can see a Buzz Lightyear hanging out there. This is Gil. The essence of the character was story-driven and character-driven. We knew the voice was Willem Dafoe. It really helped us nail it. One of the hardest things about Gil was trying to make that long dorsal fin look really beautiful. The drawing exploring a character named Peach. Jacques is a snail. Escargot. Escargot. <laughs> the final design of Jacques, he really captured that kind of uh, quirky French attitude. <laughs> A little cleaner shrimp. The uh, antiseptic nature of the exam room in the dentist office. Also the waiting room. In both cases we wanted to keep the waiting room warm and friendly and then the exam room very antiseptic just like a dentist office might be. What we call the trench. A little squishy. The entire jellyfish scene is uh, one of the earliest put into production, but one of the longest in production. It's about eight months' worth of work between the design and the camera work and the layout and the crowds. I think in a few shots there's 6,000 jellyfish. This really captured the uh, glow, the pink glow that, that these, these deadly creatures kind Yeah, Andrew of wanted emit. it to look like a wedding tent. <laughs> <laughs> the, the idea here has always been for Andrew that it's this very beautiful, diaphanous-looking thing that's deadly. Oh, this is a beautiful piece of all the different pelican variants and great job of making them all look like, making them all look different, have different personalities. This is Gerald, Nigel's best friend, uh, supposed to be a little bit fatter and a little bit more scruffy. Originally wanted a six pack of plastic. <laughs> on his leg. <laughs> on his leg. And That's this right. is uh, a Nigel, an early piece. A little bit dirtier of docks, a little bit more older and traditional. We ended up going with something else slightly more modern. There was an entire scene in the movie where Nemo was going down the toilet and through the sewage treatment plant as the water was being cleaned and then dispersed into the ocean. Uh, this scene got cut very, very far back. These are some sequence pastels showing the lighting and color for the water at the uh, outflow pipe. This crab is being fed to the seagulls by Dory. <laughs> <laughs> the fishing net and uh, very WPA style. What we tried to do with the lighting and the color here is tone everything really far down because we like the black and white effect. Although we didn't want to go completely black and white, we achieve, uh, we're, we're striving to achieve a feeling of black and white without entirely going black and white. We were able to make the world be very high contrast and dark with darks and lights without a lot of color so that Father Nemo and Dory really pop out from this crowd of fish and all of the activity going on here. So this is just a selection of artwork from a lot more that was done. It kind of provided the director with a vision of the style of the film. This was really just a starting place, and the film grew from here. So if you'd like to see more of the artwork that was done for Nemo, you can go to the galleries and poke around on your own. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys for all your help. Thanks, Ralph. Oh, and uh, I have loved working with you guys on this film, and I just wanted to say uh, thank you. Very oh. much. So here's here's that twenty bucks thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to my trailer. <laughs> <laughs>